Today I want to talk to you about chapter 6 of Start With Why. We've been going through this book. Uh, this is our third week of, of talking about it. And, um, and it's, been, it's been really good. It's really been challenging for me with my Amazon FBA business and, and seeing how your why impacts your business, impacts your personal life, impacts what you've got going on, impacts the decisions that you make. And, um, and we're getting close to being halfway through the book. And I wanna, I've got some sections out of the book that I want to read to you. But just as kind of a, a review, there's, there's the three, three different areas that most people focus on with their personal life and in their business. You know, you've got, you've got, your, you got your why, you've got your how, and you've got your what. And so most people focus too much time on their what and their how and not enough time on their why when their why is what really fuels everything that they're doing. Their why is what helps them keep going. Their why is what helps them uh, to know what to do, how to make better decisions. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. We're in part three. Part three is called Leaders Need a Following. And you're like, okay, how does being a leader impact my Amazon FBA business? Well, it, it impacts it in a couple ways. Number one, Who's, who's, who's leading you? I mean, really, you, you want to be sure that you're following somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who is going to lead you in the right direction. And you're like, and, and, and if you're thinking to yourself, well, nobody's leading me. I mean, well, I think it's important for you to understand that you are leading yourself a lot of the times and the decisions that you make. If you're in your Amazon FBA business, you don't have a boss looking over your shoulder. You don't have quarterly business reports to, to turn in. You don't have budget reports that you have to give to your boss and then hope that everything's good. You don't have that accountability. You are, for most people doing Amazon FBA, you are the CEO, CFO, you are the accountant, you are the, you are the main worker, you're the secretary, you are the janitor, you are everything in your business. And I talk a lot about trying to outsource things and uh, finding other people to be involved in your business to kind of free you up to do the things that are more profitable. But if you're, we're talking about leadership and importance of leadership, I think it's important to know about if you can, you know, trust yourself as a leader, if you need to set up accountability. So let's talk and look at some of the things in, in this book that really stood out to me. Um, all right. It talks about this story about he, the, 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 I, the author, Simon, uh, had a roommate in college who was growing when the his roommate was growing up he was on the worst baseball team and I've been there because I I when I was growing up doing little league baseball I was on the worst team and I think I was the worst kid on the worst team I mean one year up until the very last game to get on I either struck out I either walked or I got hit by a pitch and that was the only time I ever got on base was walking or getting hit by pitch. And the very last day of the season, I actually grounded out to shortstop and I was excited because I actually hit the ball. That's how bad it was. But they lost nearly every game they played. I'm going to start reading this. Um, and not by small margins either. They were regularly annihilated. Their coach was a good man who wanted to instill a positive attitude in the young athletes. After one of the more embarrassing losses, the coach pulled the team together and reminded them, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. What matters is how you play the game. It was at this point that my friend raised his hand and said, then why do we keep score? So that young man's name was Howard, and Howard understood from a very young age that the very, at the very heart of all humans is the desire to win. No one likes to lose. And the most healthy people live their life to win. The only variation is the score that we use. For some, it's money. For other, it's fame and awards. For some, it's power, love, a family, spiritual fulfillment. The metric is relative, but the desire is the same. A billionaire often doesn't need to work. Money becomes a way to keep score, a relative account of how things are going. Even a billionaire who loses millions due to poor decisions can get depressed, even though the money may have zero impact on his lifestyle. No one likes to lose. The drive to win is not per se a bad thing. Problems arise when the metric becomes our only measure of success. When what you achieve is no longer tied to your why, you set out to achieve it in the first place. And this really stood out to me with our Amazon FBA business because there are a lot of different ways that we could try to 
quantify our business and if we're winning or losing. Whether it's like, okay, I'm making more money than somebody else or I'm selling more items than somebody else. It's, it, it's amazing how many times I see on Amazon people posting pictures of these carts full of inventory. And they're like saying, hey, look, I did awesome and I'm trying to inspire other people. But other people can look at that and be like, you're, you're bragging and you're showing off and you're trying to see like I'm a winner. Some people might be like, oh, I only made five figures this month instead of six figures this month. And you're like, oh, I can just make five figures in a year. That would be great. And so, you know, it's like it, when, when, when we're reading those kind of things online and on Facebook and people giving these different metrics on how they're winning or how they're scoring, a lot of us feel inspired. But another group of us can feel defeated because we're like, I'm not at that point. But I hardly ever see anybody posting a picture of an empty cart after coming out of a store. Except me. I did that one time. I was like, I didn't find anything and I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody by doing that. But I just noticed that no one was posting empty carts. I do see people sometimes posting you know, slow sales day. And they're like, is it just me? Or is it the economy? Or is it the, you know, gas prices? Why, why is my, why am I not having sales today? But when it comes down to it, we all want to win. And what is the thing that you are measuring that is driving you? Because if it's all about money, then that's something that we're going to end up on the losing end. And it's not going to be something that's sustainable. So, but if your why comes down to the freedom that you get to experience by selling online, if your why is your family, you're wanting to make an income to support your family, maybe pay off a debt or a mortgage or save up for college for your kids. If, if that is your why, then it translates into making better decisions for your business, um, even, sm even better smaller decisions on like, what am I going to learn next? What am I going to source? How am I going to reprice? Do I need to reprice this now or and get the sale today so that I can get my numbers up for today because you know I want to try to make three hundred dollars in sales every day do I should I lower my price so I can match so I can get three hundred dollars in sales today or do you have a long-term uh, perspective and you're like you know what I, if I hold my price a little bit a week from now you know I've looked at the camel 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 data I know the price is gonna come back up I can wait it out and you know what I can get my price the way I want it later because I've got more of a long-term perspective rather than just trying to see about winning today. You want to be able to understand, and I've said this before, that it, the, selling on Amazon FBA is a marathon. It takes time to train. It takes time to, to go through uh, the race. There's different milestones along the way that we, that we pass and we grow and we try to keep our eyes um, on the finish line as best as we can, but sometimes we can't even f see the finish line. So the next thing I want to talk about is trust because when we're learning new things on Amazon, learning new things on Facebook groups and, and how we're making decisions with our Amazon business, we need to be sure that we're following people and that we're surrounded by people we trust. Um, it says in here that we trust people with common values and beliefs is not a profound assertion. The reason why we're not friends with, I mean, there is a reason why we're not friends with everybody we meet. We're friends with the people that see the world the way we see it and share our beliefs and our, view, our views. No matter how good someone looks on paper, it doesn't guarantee a friendship. And I started thinking about that with, with the different Amazon FBA, the Amazon FBA groups, Facebook groups that are out there. There's so many different Amazon FBA groups. I'm probably a member of about 50 of them, but there's only three that I spend most of my time in. You know, I spend time in Scanner Monkey. That's a paid group. I spend time in my own um, Facebook group, full-time FBA Facebook group, and and then I spend time in the Mommy Income Facebook group, even though I'm not a mommy. They allow daddies in there too. But I spend most of my time there because th that is a group of people I resonate with, I connect with, um, and, and, and have the type of values when it comes to selling online and how they present themselves online that I connect with. I really connect with the people in that group. There's other groups out there that I really avoid. There's one group in particular, and I'm not going to name them, but they are like brutal to each other. They complain all the time. I mean, they are sarcastic and snarky. They are rude. And it's, a, a, it's amazing that there's like so many people in that Facebook group, but... 
that is the the type of people that they attract. That's the type of people that, are, and so that's that's fine for them if that's where they want to surround themselves with. If you know, I'd rather be surrounded by positive, uplifting, encouraging people than the people that are going to be complaining all the time. Um, because what you surround yourself with, who you surround yourself around, impacts you in so many ways. And so you want to be around people who build you up. You don't want to be around toxic people who just tear you down for their own benefit. Uh, that's just not who I want to be around. So let's see what else. There's something else that stood out to me. Um, the, the whole section, when motivated by why, success just happens. It's when we get lost in the who and the what and the how that that we end up... Um, being distracted from finding our true success because our why really helps us get there. You think about the Wright brothers and in, in, in the book Start With Why, the author talks about the Wright brothers and it says, you know, they had failure after failure and while most people give up after their failures, not the Wright brothers because they had a passion for it. You know, there was two different groups of people in that day. There was a group of people that had the money, they had the corporate sponsors, they had the newspapers, they had everyone supporting them, and they were trying to make the first manned uh, flight. And and then there was, you know, the Wright brothers who didn't have the money, but they had the passion, they had the why. The people over here with all the money and the corporate sponsors and stuff, they were seeking fame, they were seeking fortune, while the Wright brothers were seeking flight. And so they were able to find that success. Even though they failed over and over and over again, that didn't, that didn't get them frustrated. I don't know how you came to Amazon FBA. I don't know how you learned about it. I don't know how you decided that this is something you wanted to try and this is something you want to do. But if you look back in your past at the different things that you've tried to do to make money, whether it's online, whether it's in your uh, community, in your, in your neighborhood, in your city, if you look back over your past and you've tried, you've tried this, that didn't work. You 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 tried this, that didn't work. It might be because you really haven't spent enough time investing in each of those um, opportunities before you tried and gave up and tried to do something else. You know, I get people who unsubscribe from my email newsletter and, and and they say, you know, thanks for all your newsletters. That was, the information was great, but I tried Amazon FBA and it just didn't work. And I understand it's not for everybody. But I also think that there are some people out there who give up right before they're about to make their big breakthrough and their big success. I mean, what if the Wright brothers decided, we've crashed this plane 400 times. We're done. I'm done with it. No, they kept going because it was it was in their passion. It was, it was in their being that they had that passion and that drive to keep going. They couldn't stop if they if they wanted to. I mean, they just had. There was just that itch that needed to be scratched, and and uh, it was just something that was that fueled them. And and so they they kept with their why. And same thing with Amazon FBA. If you start to lose your why, you're going to lose your way, and you're not going to be able to find success with Amazon FBA. And you're just going to quit Amazon FBA because it didn't work. And you're going to jump on to something else that other people are finding success in. I mean, I honestly believe if people are finding success in something, then it's possible for you too. It just ta it takes time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of learning. And it takes patience. And yeah, I said that twice because it takes a lot of patience with being able to learn something and master it to the point that you can uh, make a full-time income on it. You know, I, I mean, I spent... Um, at least six months doing Amazon FBA, um, doing it before I started being able to, to get something close to a full-time income. And um, there are a lot of people who just try it for shorter than that. Um, and it's different for everybody. Some people might need to try it even longer than that to be able to find success. But it all comes back to your why. If you're like, you know what? I love Amazon FBA because I don't have to send my kids to daycare. I can do my work at home, spend my time with my kids. I don't have to be gone all day and have to spend, you know, two hours commuting to and from work and miss time with spending with my wife. I, I get a chance to live at home. I get to, you know, choose uh, to go, you know, see my kids at school for their, their, their plays, their projects, their games. I go hang out with them at lunch if I wanted to. And I've got the freedom to, you know what, if 
if we wanted to, let's let's all pick up and go on a trip this weekend. I don't have to ask for time off. I love the freedom that Amazon FBA provides. And I love helping others achieve that freedom too. That kind of goes back to our why. Our why is something that is glued to not only our Amazon FBA business, but also the full-time FBA blog. We love helping people. We love teaching people new ways. We love it when people, the light bulb goes on and they realize they finally get it and they understand how to make the best decisions when it comes to building an Amazon business so that they can leave their jobs. I, I truly love hearing from people who've, the light bulb has gone on and they've got it. They realize that that they can do that, that they can leave their full-time job and they can come over and start making a full-time income with Amazon FBA. Why, why do people keep calling me? If hey, if it's you calling me, if you're trying to call me right now, I'm going to get you. You're busted. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but, but again, it takes patience. It takes patience and it takes time. And it's something that um, it can only come from within. And, and yeah, keep working at it. Keep trying. I'm here to help. There's other people out there who are, who are here to help. And that's why we have our Q&A sessions at least once a week. We hang out and talk Amazon FBA. I want to answer your questions and uh, and help you as much as possible. Um, you know, we've got 60 plus YouTube videos. We've got all these Periscope videos. We've got over 100 blog posts and stuff to help you make better decisions. And I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so it's something that um, that really drives us to be able to help you and and hopefully we've been able to do that um, All right, let's get to a couple more things and then and then we'll get going um, The author was talking about Apple and they were saying Apple does not have a lock on good ideas There are smart innovative thinkers at most companies, but great companies give their people a purpose or a challenge which to develop ideas rather than simply trust their instincts to make them a better mousetrap. Companies that study their competitors in hopes of adding the benefits or features that will make their products better are only working to entrench the companies in what it does. Companies with a clear sense of why tend to ignore their competition, whereas those with a fuzzy sense of why are obsessed with what others are doing. And you know, I was just thinking about, um, you know, it talks about companies here, but guess what? You're a company. Even though you might be an individual doing your Amazon FBA business, you are your company. And if you are obsessed with what your competitors are doing, then it's something that that um, that could impact your your business. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm, it's driving tanking prices are, are driving me crazy. Well, what what's one of the reasons why you know the price is tanking? Because you're going in and checking what the, your competitors are doing. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but if you begin to obsess about it and you're like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna lower my price too, and I'm gonna, you know, if it it could become something that takes over and you obsess about, and you can start making some bad decisions, because it's not all about getting the next sale. It's about making a sale at the right time that gives you the profit that you need to reinvest back into your business. And so that's something that I wanted to talk about. Chapter six has it's been full. It's one of the longest chapters. It is the longest chapter in um in the book, but it's filled with lots of stories. Lots of inspiration. I think even if you if you haven't read, read this book yet and you start and read chapter six by itself, it's like its own little awesome mini book. And so um, so check that out. Hopefully you're reading it. FullTimeFBA.com forward slash book club is where you sign up if you're not already and you get all the information for the books that we're doing. And, um, and, and next time we'll be talking about chapters, uh, I believe it's chapter seven and eight. So... Be reading that, so that we'll be, and we'll talk about that next week. That's all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up below, or if you have a comment or a question, you can do that below too. Uh, I try to respond to all comments and questions as soon as possible, so if you have any questions about what I said or want to follow up on something, or maybe even want to add something to the discussion, you can do that in the comment section below. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on any Amazon FBA videos, be sure you subscribe and you can always find more about me going to fulltimefba.com. Subscribe to our blog. We got lots of freebies for you and lots of stuff to help you take your Amazon business to the next level. Well, I will see you later and I hope you have a great day. Bye.